Now then, my name is Ryan Central, and over the last couple of Zane videos that I've done recently, a lot of you have asked about the other legendary class mods, how to make builds around him, so I figured I'd go through each of Zane's five legendary class mods, talk about if they're good or not, basically, do a bit of a tier list, but mostly talking about the general playstyles that you'll want to work with each of them. Legendary class mods are a great way to start off a build, because not only do they have extra talent points that they can put into certain areas, they also have extra perks that remind me of exotics in Destiny. Destiny, meaning that you can add a little bit more to a playstyle that these legendary class mods are coercing you into. I did want to say before we get started though, that especially for Zane, some epic or even rare class mods that he can get can be a lot better than the ones that he has currently. For example, I have this Merciless Disruptor one, which gives me extra points into the talents that you can see on screen. No doubt Dr. Disrespect loves this talent because it's got violent speed, violent momentum, and violent violence. All kill skills, all about movement speed, all about fire rate, meaning that if you are playing that fast hitman style, this isn't a bad option in comparison to some of the other ones. But like I said, we're going to go through all five of Zane's class mods. Each of the characters has five, Flak has six, and the builds that you could generally expect with each of them. I've put these ones into alphabetical order and we'll start with the Cold Warrior. Whenever Zane freezes an enemy, a random stats effect is applied to them instantly. It doesn't have a huge amount to do with the sort of ice build, cryo build that you've seen a lot from Zane. The build that has a lot of focus on calm cool collected whenever you freeze an enemy your shield start recharging unless they're full in which case your health starts regenerating unless it's full in which case your abilities duration is immediately reset or it goes straight off cooldown for it to be used again which makes it really strong you've seen a lot of people highlight builds there and i'll be honest i infamously didn't like this build but a few people in twitch chat helped me work it out and said you're running it wrong you need to sort of run it with some other bits and pieces including a rough rider which is a shield that gives you zero capacity it does reduce incoming damage so it does make you a little bit tanky and gives you more health but the reason why this works so well is because you don't need to worry about the stage of freezing an enemy and having your shields recharge because you have full shields anyway because it has a capacity of zero so you bypass that step in order to keep your durations low but also you have the barrier ability you pick it up you wear it you take no damage meaning that you're always full health meaning that when you freeze an enemy you don't need to worry about your shields recharging because they're always full and you shouldn't have to worry about your health regenerating because the barrier is taking all of the damage your health should be full should be so you have your abilities resetting all the time granted the gameplay in the background isn't a great showcase of this i'll admit i'm not very good with this build as a whole but i do want to dedicate more time to it because i do think that there is a lot more merit than i first gave it credit for so i apologize for that I'm willing to hold my hands up and say yeah i wrote it off a bit too much Going back to this class mod though, it really doesn't provide an awful lot. It'd be nice if it provided enough to incentivize running this legendary class mod and this build as a whole. It's kind of par for the course for Zane. I don't think any Vault Hunter should really rely on their legendary class mods making them super OP or just making a class viable, but it should really complement what you're trying to do. And a random status effect being applied to a target, whilst it's a cool idea, doesn't provide enough damage or utility. It's barely noticeable when I was playing with this, if I'm being honest. So this was on Mayhem 3. I remember doing some Eden 6 missions. Can't remember the modifiers. I know some of you guys would like to know that, but it was just general bits and pieces out in the world. Very hard to notice any sort of meaningful effect. Honestly, this is one way you can run some normal class mods instead, so long as they have to do with the build that you're running, really complementing added talents. All in all, I do recommend you run the Cryo build for Zane a little bit more, at least experiment and try it out, like I just mentioned. It's a lot better way of running it, but also this class mod, you really don't need to run it alongside. In fact, I'd recommend that you don't because it's not great. Hence why I rated it a two out of five. It's just really not that good. But don't worry, there are worse ones for Zane, which I can't wait to get into. We will go over a nice one, one that I really appreciate for Zane and I have used in a lot of my own builds, the Executor. It's a kill skill. Whenever Zane kills an enemy, you gain accuracy, handling, critical hit damage, status effect damage, and status effect chance. Those last two are really good if you're running elemental weapons, which honestly you should be because elemental weapons on average are a lot stronger than physical ones so i would definitely be wanting to run that it gives you extra pointed to kill skill talents the lower tier ones too which are all pretty strong so if you are running like a hitman build and you just want to add a little bit more without having a legendary class mod dictate how you play then this is really good because it just adds on top this is one that just complements what you're trying to do it embellishes it a little bit more emphasizing the strength of your kill skills so when you have this on it feels really good and it doesn't feel like you have to do certain things you don't need to freeze enemies you don't need to do this you can play however you want just so long as you keep killing stuff you will see the benefits no matter what you're 
are doing. But I do rate this one quite highly. I've spoken about it quite a lot on the channel, so I've rated it a four out of five. It's not completely broken top tier. It's not like some of the ones that Moe's has, which we'll go over in another video, but it's good. Like this is really good if you get one because it's like, hey, are you playing Hitman? Run this legendary class mod. You get extra talents and you also get more kill skills. What is wrong with that? It's very nice and clear and I wish that all of Zane's legendary class mods were more like this. The only issue I guess is that it's a little bit boring, doesn't really add too much, but sometimes that's not a bad thing, right? Next up is the Infiltrator, another one I've highlighted quite a lot and another one I really like. Zane's weapon damage and movement speed are increased, the lower his shield, the greater the bonus. Whenever Zane activates an action skill, he breaks his shield. This is one that was a bit counterproductive, this one wound me up in the video talking about endgame Zane, because a lot of Zane's skills want him to have full shield, so having a class mod that breaks that shield constantly constantly is a little bit counterproductive to some of the builds that you may want to run. Granted not all of them, but it's still a bit against the grain of what you might be trying to do. However, if you pair this again with the Rough Rider, the shield has zero capacity and increases your health and damage reduction, it means that you constantly see that upgrade of damage and movement speed. Granted, you have no idea by how much because Gearbox don't like giving stats apparently, but it's a really cool one to be running. You get extra bonuses, you get extra damage. What's wrong with that, to be honest? And also you get extra talents into the movement speed, talent skills that Zane has. Meaning that if you want to be zooming around quite quickly, and you're playing on your own, this is a really good one. This is the one that I've run the majority of the time. It's really nice synergy with the Shield Rough Rider more than anything. Running it with anything else that increases your health with reduction to your shield, it's going to work quite a lot. But like I said, if you're trying to run some like full shields all of the time, increasing your ability cooldown rate because you have full shields, those kind of talents, then this is where it's completely counterproductive. But the more that I've played with this, the more fun I've had. It's strong and it's fun. You can't really say more than that. It's also a four out of five if you aren't running the executor with you know a big emphasis on kill skills this one is also pretty good works with any build that you might want to run a zane which says a lot because you can build him in more ways than anybody else it feels but it's not completely broken like blastmaster is for moes or anything for flak they have really crazy legendary class mods. That's why this isn't like a 4.5 out of 5 or a 5 out of 5. This is where we get into ranty territory. And I need a moment to talk about this next one. The Shockerator grants Zane's Digiclone the binary system augment. To be clear, that's an augment for the Digiclone. Whenever you swap places with the clone, a cryonova is triggered around Zane and his clone. So you get an extra augment on the clone, which I think is actually kind of cool. However, when Zane's clone receives a melee damage, it creates a shock nova around it. This shock nova does about 1000 damage. You can see how much or really how little it does on screen and this is one I look at it and go Gearbox just ran out of ideas and wanted to rush something out the door. This is really not only dull, not exciting but also just really bad in a lot of cases. Now the extra sort of points that you get from the talents aren't too bad. There's a big focus here from like grenade points having increased grenade regeneration with pocket full of grenades and the duct tape mod. So maybe if you're running some like clone ice build it might work there but I just look at this and feel like really uninspired. If the Shock Nova damage was increased to like 10 to 20k damage, that might be quite cool. To have a legendary class mod based around making the Digiclone really tanky, really strong and having the enemy focus on that, I think would be really cool. But the damage of this is just really bad, like really, really poor. I think it just scales really badly as you climb. And I just think more could have been done with this. Like this just as a class mod feels really pointless and useless in comparison to some of the other ones. This might be the worst class mod in the game. Granted, I haven't gone over Amara and Flak just yet, but I really don't like this one. I do like the idea of getting extra augments on something like Zane, where you just have all of these like utility pieces on your Sentinel and your Digi clone. I think that would be a nice thing to add on top, but they have to increase the shock nova damage like 100%. I think I got lucky with some of the points from the class mod with the talent, but the perks are just pretty bad. So I've actually rated it a one out of five. That might seem a little bit harsh because on paper, it doesn't look that bad. But when you play with it, you don't notice a difference. You don't feel the strength of this class mod at all. And because of that, I'm really disappointed. But now going over to the tech spurt, the final one, kill skill. You have a 5% chance on a kill to recharge Sentinel cooldown and duration. Now, because it's a kill skill, there's a bit of a focus on the hitman trait 
three. I think that would work quite a bit there. You have a couple of points thrown into the undercover tree for shield regeneration and the like. It's just one of those ones that's really confusing to build around, but even then, a 5% chance on a kill to recharge Sentinel cooldown a duration, when you could like 100% do that with the Cam Cool collected build that we mentioned at the start of the video, this barely procced. I think this procced once in the half an hour that I was using it. 5% chance just isn't enough. This could be made a lot better if they increased that chance to like 25% or 30%. That'd be really cool, but 5% chance on a kill to recharge it? That is just too small, I think. That's just way too negligible to actually make any difference. And when you're out and about and you can't really see these perks working or seeing any impact at all, I think that's a pretty red flag. It's an easy fix, just up the percentage for the chance on kill. 20% I'd say at least. Zayn needs us kind of like crazy legendary class mods that everybody else seems to have. And like we've gone over with the last five, some are decent, some are fine, but for the most part, Cold Warrior, Shocker Rate and Texpert, Texpert I've rated 1.5 out of 5. It's not as bad as the Shocker Rater, but it's pretty dull and there's zero impact. The majority of Zayn's legendary class mods are pretty poor to the point where you'll probably want to be running epic or even rare class mods instead based on whatever talent points that you get extra from them which i think is really disappointing i think this is a clear area that if gearbox wanted to buff zane in any capacity they either get rid of some of these legendary class mods that we've gone over or just buff them to a level that makes them really strong when you have the broken builds that moes and flak have and even amara i think amara has been greatly overlooked in that capacity we'll talk about endgame amara some other time but i don't think the answer is to nerf moes or flak or Mara, it's to buff all of the other areas that aren't strong. And I think Zayn is encapsulated by that. Is Zayn the weakest out of the four Vault Hunters? Yes. However, he is my main. I enjoy playing him. He is a lot of fun. And whilst he doesn't have a brokenly OP build that Flak and Moe's have, at least he has a various amount of ways that he can play that all feel fairly balanced, if not undertuned in comparison to everything else. As time has gone on, I've kind of gone against what I've said before in the Endgame Zane video where I wish that he had stuff that like Flak had. But the problem with Flak is you can only really build him one major way. His skill trees in the Master Tree around this pet, for example, are just not very good. It's similar with Moe's to an extent. But I think this is the area that Gearbox should really start with buffing Zane. Make these legendary class mods impactful. Not even like overpoweredly strong, just make them feel like they make a difference because three out of the five that we've just gone over, my main complaint was you don't see any impact, you don't feel any impact. At least with Executor and Infiltrator, you feel like something's changing. Your playstyle is changing a little bit. It's synergizing with gear better. You could do some really cool stuff building around that legendary class mod. The other three, really bad in comparison, and they need changing. But just to go over them from top to bottom, how I've rated them, Executor and Infiltrator are both the same, four out of five. If you get either of them, have a lot of fun with building around them. They're pretty cool. Cold Warrior isn't very good. It's a two out of five. The build around Cool Cam Collected is a lot better than I gave it credit for, but this legendary class mod doesn't add anything new. Textbook just isn't impactful. You don't see anything happen when you're wearing this legendary class mod. And Shock Rater, need I say more, really dull, really boring, really unimpactful. As a Zane main, it's pretty rough times right now, so I hope the Gearbox see this video and sort of acknowledge the fact that these class mods just need upping in some capacity. But I hope you enjoyed this video, that's it for this time. If you did enjoy this video and want to see me do this for the other Vault Hunters, let me know who in the comments below and I'll be sure to get on that. Thanks for watching, take care, we'll see you then.